Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Late Night Brew, where we talk the brews first, and then we get around what we're supposed to later. Joining me once again on the fifth episode of this awesome series is Brian Gilligan. Brian, welcome back, buddy. Thank you. And Brian, so today we're going to talk about the mentality organizations need to have when they're walking into this kind of transformation. Yeah. However, first, you know the drill very well by now, sir. What are you, what brew are you enjoying? All right, I'm back to the um, Cosmic Microwave and IPA here in Australia. It's very tasty. Very, very nice. Hard to, hard to go wrong. Well, it's easy to go wrong with an IPA, but that's my opinion. Uh, <laughs> I have a session. session. It's a Mexican style lager. So it's the, the session beer, of course, is it's lighter. So you can drink lots of it and not feel <laughs> terrible the next day. So it's very good. Well, that's very dangerous when it's hot. <laughs> so diving into it, <clears throat> what does an organization need to think about when they're heading into this kind of transformation project? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that organizations really need to think about. What I try to do is think of it in terms of being strategic, tactical, and then uh, the lowest level operational. Mm -hmm. So at a tactical level, I mean, I'm sorry, at a uh, strategic level, um, it's that bigger picture view of the world. And I think as a CFO or um, somebody who, who is looking at it like a CTO, you have to think about what you want your data culture to look like. Uh, potentially, is it, do you want to have a data-driven type of data culture? And you have to think about things like how could BI and data analytics transform and help your business, help your organization? So it's big, those kind of bigger questions. And I like to tell organizations that you should be thinking of it like a, like a journey. And like any journey, uh, it starts with understanding where you are. So mm -hmm. discovering where you're at currently, and then looking at where you want to go to um, what, and, and start to plan for that. And then lastly, in terms of strategic, is then thinking about the implementation. So it's really right. those three steps. It's discovering where you are, planning where you want to go, and how are you going to get there in terms of implementing it. Now. Yeah, no. Uh, so that's always oh, start there. Um, <laughs> the next one I think down is that tactical level. So once you kind of know where you want to go, then you kind of look at it and go, okay, do we have the tools? Uh, do we have the infrastructure to support this? Like, for example, like do we have a data platform that's going to support this? And, and three, do we have those policies and processes that are going to support it as well? And one of the ones I right. talk about to our clients quite a bit is, is things like data governance. Do you have those things in place? Um, and if you don't, how are we going to get them in place? Does the infrastructure, is everything in place too? Are you are your systems talking with the right things? Are people caring? You know, is, is that data being shipped around? Because, you know, oh, I want to build a skyscraper. Yeah, but... You live in a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You all, we all got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> but um, it, it is looking at that and saying, well, if we want to get to, say, this level of maturity with our data and our BI, do we have those things? Do we have that in place to do it? Do we have the, do we, do we have the tools? Do we have the applications? Do we have to go out and, 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 and get that and, uh, and look to budget for that? And then the, the last one down is really what I call operational. And that's really on the ground, actually performing all of this stuff, whether it's in the data space or what we're talking about today in, in, in business intelligence. And what it always reminds me when I think about resourcing is what I learned back in business school. And that's when it comes to what's your resource strategy? Are we going to build with the existing employees? Are we going to borrow? temporarily bringing consultants, or are we going to buy it? Are we going to go out and these are new roles and we have to actually resource for, and, and hire for this? So the resourcing and, and, and making sure people have the training. So you now that you have the people, these are all tools that are really developing quite quickly. 
and you want to ensure that they're using the tools the way they're meant to be used. So you have to have that type, all that type of training uh, to, to to allow people to optimize it. And then the, the last one, when it comes to operational in supporting the, the people, is is really that support structure. Is there the the help desk? Do we have uh, either people internally or exter exter uh, internally <laughs> exterior, <laughs> externally that are going to support the teams that are doing all this stuff? So really, at the end of the day, it, it is, I think, what organizations really need to do is take a step back and before they jump in, really look at and, and consider some of those strategic, tactical, and operational things. Yeah. <clears throat> To, if you could, if it's possible, and this might be a, a hard task to put you on the spot though, if if you could sum up, you know, the elevator pitch, right? With this transformation mentality, what should organizations think about? <clears throat> like, what are they? Would it be what are they trying to achieve, right? Or is it right the elevator pitch, right? So. It, <laughs> that, that's great. There's a lot of depth in there, but you know we need that that fun tagline. So, <laughs> well, I tell you, I think what it is, and and for me, I'm I'm just putting it out there. I really like the Microsoft uh, Power BI as an example. They have an adoption roadmap, and I like mm -hmm. to think of it like a journey. And they have a very uh, a structured approach to it. But what you're really doing is there's ten different things you have to consider. And the great thing about the adoption process is that um, the roadmap is that it gives you a level of, okay, where are you today at that level, like say 100? And right. where do you want to get to realistically to that 400? And it covers all the different aspects of it from, you know, from executive um, sponsorship to the infrastructure and support. So for me, I think to, to kind of really quickly say, let's go on that journey of uh, looking at the adoption roadmap whether for Power BI or for a BI system. Yeah, that, that always comes back to that, you know, self-inventory as it were, of where, where are you at? Because to your point, right? If you don't know where you're at, how do you know how to get to where you want to be? <laughs> well, that's right. It, it probably the biggest um, hole that people fall into or, or quickly fall into a trap is that they immediately go towards a solution and I, I would always try to tell, uh, or try to guide our clients to say, take a step back. What are you really trying to achieve? That's a very expensive thing. Is it going to give you the outcome that you're looking for? Or you may want to think about and doing, doing discovery first to, to understand what you really do need rather than yeah. jump into it. And so try to take that more of a, um, a more of a, if you want to say strategic approach, but more of a thoughtful approach. Definitely. Oh, that was a incredibly in-depth <laughs> view. So thank you. Uh, and unfortunately, it's up our time. As always, really appreciate you joining me. Please, our contact information is below. Feel free to reach out. You want to know more? Until next episode, Brian, take care. And thank All you right. very much, sir. Have a good day. All right, take care. <laughs>